Hello, and welcome to everything you want to know about the Google Certified Trainer application. Well, hopefully everything you want to know. So I'm going to walk you through this process. I'm going to show you exactly the questions that they ask on the application. I'm going to help you get a better idea of what it takes to become a Google Certified Trainer. And if we haven't met before, my name is Casey Bell. I'm a digital learning coach, author, blogger, podcaster, and uh, you can find pretty much everything that I do at shakeuplearning.com. I am also a big fan of Google. So I regularly share Google tips and tricks and have another podcast of all about Google called the Google Teacher Tribe podcast that I do with Matt Miller, as well as providing free resources, videos, and online courses to help others get Google certified. Because I can tell you that the biggest game change for my career was getting Google certified. And you can learn more about all of the certifications at getgooglecertified.com. Okay, so why listen to me? Well, if that hasn't convinced you, I am a Google certified educator, level one and two. I am also a Google certified trainer, innovator, and I was a course developer for Google. So some of the lessons in the Google Teacher Center that are designed to help you get certified, I actually wrote some of those lessons. I am also a Google Educator Group leader for North Texas, as well as having over 10 years of professional development experience as a leader and presenter. I am also an author, a keynote speaker, and a featured presenter at events across the globe. And I have facilitated Google certified boot camps, and I've helped thousands become Google certified. I know the process, I know what it takes, and I can help you get there. And just in case you need a little bit more, I have actually received a thank you from the Google for Education team for all of the work that I have done to help get other educators certified. Now, I also have tons of free resources, including resources to help you become a Google certified trainer. So you can access free videos, downloads, tips, and more by going to shakeup.link forward slash trainer dash resources. And you can get this free ebook, How to Become a Google Certified Trainer, as well as access all of my free resources right there. Now, becoming a certified trainer is really kicking things up a notch. It is definitely different than level one and level two. This is going to help you take your career to the next level. So if you want recognition for your expertise and training experience, and you want to join an elite group of Google certified trainers across the globe, you can also gain access to special resources and learning materials, as well as visibility in the Google for Education trainer directory. You can also be invited to present at special events and you have the potential to bring in additional income or take an entirely new career path. So if that sounds good to you, keep listening. I have more. So I'm also going to tell you about my online course, the Google Certified Trainer Academy, and you can find out why it's different. So I have taught face-to-face -face boot camps many times, and it's tough. It's tough as a trainer, but it's tough as a participant to get everything you need in those one to two days. And becoming a trainer can be a long process, depending on where you are, how much experience you have. So it becomes a little bit more of a coaching type of scenario on top of preparing you for the exam and the application and the video and all of the materials that go along with that. So my course is different than anything else you're going to find online, including Google's Teacher Center. This is anytime, anywhere learning and access to the course. So 24 seven, you get to move at your own pace. So if you need to rewatch videos, go a little bit slower, or maybe, hey, you already know this and you wanna go faster, you, you can skip sections, you can do it exactly how you want to do it. You also get to connect and learn in a community. So I have a private community just for the students of the Certified Trainer Academy. 
You can also get advice from experienced trainers right at your fingertips. So not only is the course taught by an experienced trainer, myself, but also in the community, there are already many other certified trainers who are still there connecting and cheerleading you on. I will be your very own guide through the exam and the application process. And of course, I'm going to give you tips, tricks, tutorials, and much, much more. So just in case you landed on this video and you are brand new to this idea and this process, you may want to go back to my previous video called The Six Steps to Google Certified Trainer. And that really walks you through all of the steps that it takes to get there. In this video, we're going to more specifically talk about step six, which is all about the application. So if you're curious about those other five steps, because there's a lot <laughs> in terms of getting there, I recommend that you go back to that video and I will include a link to that one below this video as well. So some quick notes about the application. You may apply at any time throughout the year although admission decisions are rendered on a rolling basis. So this is kind of the trick here. About every six weeks, they review applications. They don't tell us exactly what dates those are. It's just that you kind of get into the next round. So if you ever get an email that says you started your application, you need to finish it to meet the deadline, it's not really a deadline. It's just the deadline to get into that round. You can actually click submit at any time. Certified trainer candidates should expect to receive notifications from four to six weeks from the date of submission. And that part can be hard waiting for it. And just in case you need a little bit of help, I have put all of the questions that I'm going to show you in this video into a Google Doc. So you can go make a copy of this document and it already has all the questions so that you can begin drafting your answers in one place and then easily copy and paste those into the application. Because trust me, once you see these questions and you start the application, you're probably not gonna finish it the first time you open it. But the good news is, is you can save as you go. So let's go into the application portal and you need to register for an account by going to shakeup.link forward slash capital G capital C capital T apply and be sure that you save your username and password most uh, cases will allow you to set this up and save each section as you work through the application you don't have to fill this out all at once as I mentioned earlier and then this is relatively new, but we now have the ability to select the application. So you can click the drop down once you're in the portal and go to Google for Education Certified Trainer. Select the application based on your language preference. So you can apply in an English application, a Spanish application, and then there's also a non-English application. And then once you get in, these are the questions that are going to ask. So part two is all about just that demographic type of information. The name of your school, your organization that you work for. You do not have to work for a school, by the way, but whoever it is that you work for goes right there. Your G Suite domain, if you have one. So if you are in a school like Commerce ISD, you do connect that and show them what your domain name is, your job title, your school or organization website, country, address, city, state, postal code, etc. So anything you see with the asterisk is going to be required. They will also ask you about your education, higher education degrees and the names of the institutions, as well as classroom teaching experience, number of years. And yes, that is important. They don't really put a specific requirement on that but it's a good thing that you've been a classroom teacher and that you have years of experience because being a Google for Education certified trainer means that you are training teachers. And obviously we want someone who has been a teacher to train other teachers. And then they're gonna ask you for your formal training experience. So the number of years that you have been in a position where you have been delivering training to teachers. That's what they're asking about. 
And then they're going to ask you for Google specific trainings, list the five most recent titles and dates. And yes, they need to be Google specific. They should probably have Google in the title if the title is not clear that it's about Google. Google wants to know that you are training specifically on Google and that you have experience with Google. So one of the things that a lot of people don't understand is in order to become a Google certified trainer, you have to have proven experience and that's what they want. So you don't apply and then go get the experience. You have to have experience before you apply. And if a current certified trainer referred you, you can include the name and email. And so I'm giving you my email address that's connected to my account. So if I have helped you in any way, please let Google know that I have been of assistance. And then they're going to ask, did you work with a Google for Education partner? So ShakeUp Learning is not an official partner. I haven't decided to go that route just yet. Um, So if you have worked with another company that is, you would put that there. Recertification as a Google certified trainer requires at least 12 trainings each year. So please state your training and coaching goals to meet or exceed this expectation. They want to know that you can meet that requirement. If it doesn't look like you can deliver 12 trainings in one year based on your experience, you're not going to be approved. So you need to think carefully about how to answer this question. So they've got some example training goals like assisting educators in obtaining level one and level two certifications, training sessions, trainers train, teachers train, change management, student outcomes, etc. You can also include coaching in one-on-one sessions, although generally they are looking for more formal training, but they are allowing us to count those as well. So a big suggestion would be to draft your answers. You see this is a hundred word limit. Draft it in that Google Doc so that you can revise it, edit, and save it and come back to it. Then copy and paste it when you're ready into the application. Take your time to write something meaningful. They really want evidence that you're going to meet that 12 trainings per year requirement. Proofread. Duh. But please proofread and send it to a friend for feedback. Then we're going to ask for the certificates. So in order to become a Google certified trainer, you also have to have level one and level two and have passed the trainer skills assessment. Again, going back to that video I mentioned earlier, six steps to Google certified trainer is where I talk about all of these requirements. So if this is new, again, you may want to go back to that other video. So you do have to upload these certificates to prove that you have these and they're in good standing. They cannot be expired. So level one, level two, and that you have taken the trainer skills assessment and passed it. That also has a certificate. You also have the opportunity to upload any other professional certifications that you may have. Totally up to you if you want to put those there, like your teacher certifications and things like that. And then we're going to move into what they call the case study. And the case study is really important and something that could take you a long time to develop, depending on what you have already done as a trainer. So this says draft your response in a Google Doc so you can save, revise and edit because the questions that you see have a 200 word limit per question. That goes pretty quickly. So you want to be concise. So here's the question. Please choose a single training that you conducted on Google Tools within the past year and answer the following five questions about that training. So if you haven't actually done anything in the last year that is this in-depth, you will want to begin planning this opportunity so that you can answer these questions. So please describe the single training for your case study. How did you demonstrate how to use the tool? How did you show attendees effective and efficient ways of integrating this tool in the classroom? See, they want to know details and they want to know not just the how-to side, but how did you show them how these tools can be used in the classroom? Really important. So again, we have to be concise with that 200 word limit and summarize. Next question, what actions did you take to engage the adult learners in this training? 
how did you differentiate the training for the different ability levels in the room? So they want to know specifically, how do you meet the needs of all of the different levels in your in your training session, which can be really hard. So you have to be specific about how you differentiate. And then they're going to ask you to provide links to at least one training material that you created and use for this training. So if it's slides, docs, etc., make sure that access is set to anyone with the link can view. Failure to do so is an incomplete application. And in fact, it's one of the number one reasons why applications are not accepted. It's just because people did not make their links shareable. So check it in an incognito window, send it to a friend to make sure that it works. And I recommend that you give them links to everything. Show them your best stuff. This is your showcase. And then you want to link to feedback. So if you maybe have been training for a while and you're not collecting feedback, you're going to have to deliver a training where you purposely collect feedback. Feedback should include both survey and responses. If you are, again, sharing any type of Google file, make sure it's set to anyone with the link can view and to check those links. So don't skip this part. Even if you haven't done anything with feedback, be sure that you plan something for the purposes of this application. Okay, next question. After reviewing the feedback from attendees of this training, how would you improve the training? What would you have done differently? Be honest. Approach this with a growth mindset. That's what they're looking for. Don't say, I wouldn't change anything. It went perfectly. Mm, Nobody's perfect. They're not looking for perfection, but they want to know that you can see room for improvement and know how to approach it. And then we move into the trainer video. So this is where you distinguish yourself by submitting a three minute video that introduces who you are as a trainer and shows them some some ways that you stand out. So in that first minute, you're going to wow us by us. That's exactly Google's wording. So wow Google by explaining why you wish to become a trainer and what makes you unique and googly final two minutes, that's when you're teaching the audience how one feature of Google's productivity suite, Chromebooks, Chrome, or Android tablets can be innovatively applied in a classroom or school setting. Okay, so first minute, you, introduction, last two minutes, you're teaching something with a screencast. And notice screencasts are required unless you get an exemption. So they do give us an email address if you want an exemption for something special. And if you want to see some example application videos, I keep a playlist on my YouTube channel, shakeup.link forward slash GCT playlist. Be sure that you capitalize GCT. And the powerful thing there to keep in mind is everybody's different. Everybody has strengths. Um, Your videos don't have to be super perfect professional quality by that I mean like not like a Hollywood (laughs) production or anything but they do want you to take the time to edit it and make it worthwhile and when they say three minutes they mean three minutes do not submit a video that is three minutes and 15 seconds so pay attention to that timeline and make sure that you are teaching something from the productivity suite, Chromebooks, Chrome, or Android tablets, or even the new Chrome tabs. They don't want third-party tools. Don't teach an add-on. Don't teach anything else. Teach what they say they want in those videos. And then you're going to apply. So those applications are reviewed on a rolling basis, but you can click submit anytime. As I mentioned earlier, if you get an email that says you only have so many days left, don't panic. That's just to get into the next round of reviews. You can click submit any time. So when you're submitting your application, double check that you have everything that's required and all your information is correct. Check all of your links in incognito and make sure they're accessible. Don't forget to submit everything through the application portal. 
and then you wait. <laughs> so notifications will be sent to the email address that you provided in your application. My advice is to use a personal email just so that you can always get to it in case you move or change jobs. And yes, everyone doesn't make the cut. So just because you checked all the boxes and submitted doesn't mean they will accept you. The Google Certified Trainer Distinction is a very special group and you want that. So you want it to be something that is of high quality. And so even if you didn't make it the first time, there are lots of people who will resubmit. So I can tell you that I did not get accepted the first time I applied. And that's because I didn't have enough experience. I had experience training on technology integration in the classroom, but I hadn't been doing a lot of Google stuff. So I needed to focus on that, build my resume, reapply, and then I was accepted. So these are the top reasons that applicants are accepted. Number one, they forgot to make their YouTube video viewable to anyone with the link. <laughs> or they forgot to share their materials and make them viewable to anyone with the link. I cannot tell you enough how many times this catches people. Okay, big faux pas. If you're going to be a trainer, you got to know how to do this. And then not enough training experience with G Suite. So your five most recent trainings and the case study should be within the last calendar year. Don't fudge on this. Don't make it up. Be honest. You are required to submit 12 trainings per year once you're accepted to maintain certification. So they just want to know that you're going to meet that expectation. The other reason that you might not get accepted is if a video is um, not focusing on a Google for Education tool and doesn't meet that three minute limit. So videos have to be viewable. They are evaluating your training ability and style in the video. So some people did not reflect the integration of tools into use with students and some did not demonstrate the Googliness of applicants. The quality of the video is very important. Your video should be posted on YouTube or in Google Drive and should be viewable to application reviewers. Use the first minute to talk about yourself and your role with regards to G Suite for Education. Use the remaining two minutes to teach a tutorial using one or more G Suite tools in an innovative way. Consider not only demonstrating the tools, but how you would use them in the classroom in a creative way. Be sure to focus on a G Suite tool, not a third party app. And they actually have an application tip website that you can get at shakeup.link forward slash app tips. Okay, so what happens if you're not accepted? Well, you can still apply anytime you want to get into that next review cycle. There is no waiting period. Don't panic. Lots of trainers don't get, get accepted on their first try. Consider it a chance to improve. And once you get certified, that's not it. It's not like a lifetime thing. You have to maintain that certification by doing these three things. So you have to conduct and report at least 12 training or coaching sessions per year. You have to share ideas and resources with the community of trainers and each year you're required to submit uh, your resubmission of interest, including an annual product update assessment. It's a quick Google form quiz, and they just want to make sure that you're keeping up with Google. It's not usually very difficult. So if you want some help with this, I have an entire online course designed to walk you through the process. It's called the Google Certified Trainer Academy self-paced. There are 18 video lessons. If you go into the Google Teacher Center and look at the training they have there, you will find it is mostly text-based. And really, if you want that extra help and push and all the tips and tricks, you want these video lessons. They are also available as PDF downloads, so you can use these to study. And I have totally redesigned the course from top to bottom. 
including updating my ultimate Google Certified Trainer planner and checklist. And that is going to help you map out your plan for success. You're going to get access to that private community and study group, testing tips, pro trainer tips, and I've got some bonus lessons in here. So one of those is how to market yourself as a trainer. The other bonus lesson is how to design Google PD that works. And that's all my tips on teaching Google, as well as giving you 12 hours of credit. And you can't get that from Google either. So this course sells for $329. And here's a quick screenshot of the Teachable platform, which is what all of my courses are hosted in. So you can see to the left, all the different modules, how long the videos are, and then your main page where you'll see the videos, you'll see additional resources and links and everything else all together. It's very easy to navigate. I love this. And I will also have another video that you can watch where I'll talk more specifically about the course. So there are three courses. There's a level one academy, level two academy, and the trainer academy. Enrollment opens twice a year. So at the time of recording this video, I'm gearing up to open in May. If you miss the May window, they will not open again until November. So be sure that you join the waitlist to be the first to know. And you can do that by going to shakeup.link forward slash May waitlist. You can also save a lot of money with bundles. So if you're looking at this and you maybe have some big goals here of becoming a trainer and don't quite have one or two yet, you may want to get these together. So individually, the courses are $329. You can bundle two courses and save $100, or you can get all three and save $250. There are payment plans available as well as purchase orders. So you can start that process now if your school is willing to pay for this for you. Also offer bulk pricing for groups of 20 or more and schools. So we can get campus licenses and district licenses if you happen to be a leader or administrator of a school and you want to get everyone certified. So this could be you. This could be you training on Google for Google for Education on a stage, a national stage, international stage. Um, there are a lot of opportunities that come your way once you become a Google certified trainer. And it is wonderful and fun. And yes, that's me way, way up there on the stage. So if you are interested in the Google Certified Trainer Academy, remember it only opens twice a year, May and November. And you can join the wait list now to get the latest information at becomeagoogletrainer.com. So I hope to see you in the courses. Bye, y'all.